Hi everyone, this is Sarbjeet again. So today we'll talk about um, the waterfall methodology. So there's two types of methodologies that are pretty um, are pretty much used um, in the IT project management business analysis world. Um, one is the waterfall methodology and the other one is agile methodology. So waterfall is the one, it's the legacy type of methodology that um, has been in practice for many, many, many years, uh, many, many years for now. Agile is the new buzzword. It's what everybody is trying to go for. But still, there's many, many companies that are still using waterfall today. So today we'll talk about the waterfall methodology. Here's what um, is one image that you know, you'll see typically is used. It's called the software development lifecycle and waterfall methodology. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll discuss this today. Um, the difference between waterfall and agile is agile is iterative, which means that you do, you break the project into smaller, smaller chunks and you implement over time, right? Uh, agile is typically used for product development. So if you're building a brand new product or you're handling a product, that's where agile is most effective because you're building and you're testing, you're rolling out, and again, you're going back and building smaller, smaller pieces. With waterfall, it's all like a, a linear process, which means that you first gather requirements, you have a product idea or a project idea, you gather requirements, you create the design, then you have developers program that, and then you go into deployment. So typically, um, you don't see the end product till the close of a project. And that's why Agile is a little bit more effective because you see smaller bits and pieces of the project coming along. There's higher adoption because people know what the product is going to look like. A lot of times um, when you start, you know, at the beginning of a project, uh, by the time you get to the end, it looks and feels a lot different. So that's why there's a lot more adoption with Agile, but Waterfall is what we're going to talk about today because Waterfall is pretty much used a lot um, in a lot of companies. So if you're just logging in, say hello. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Waterfall methodology. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you're watching this in replay, um, please let me know in the comments so I know um, that you're watching. And then also let me know how effective these trainings are. And if you have other topics that you'd like to um, learn more about, let me know. And I will incorporate the, the topics into the video. So today we're going to talk about the waterfall methodology. You see this circle is a printout I got from Google. Google's my best friend. I use Google for everything. So you can, um, you know, if you type in waterfall, you'll find similar types of um, charts. So when we talk about waterfall, you see different things. So the first one is planning, analysis, design, implementation, testing, and then maintenance are the different phases within a waterfall project. The, the ones that where you see like lots of hands is where the business analysts are the most active and this group is focused on business analysts. So that's why I have that marked. And very briefly, I'll talk about each of these phases and what typically happens in them. And again, if you have questions after this video or during this video, let me know. So typically in the planning phase, which is right here, and this is where the idea or the project is, is kind of born. Um, uh, typically, uh, a lot of teams um, have lots of ideas and they bring them to the IT uh, groups for adoption, right? So management has to approve because IT projects are pretty expensive. Project um, management and leadership have to approve these projects. So once they're approved, um, that's all done in the planning phase. So they're trying to find funding, they're trying to find resources. So at typically planning, not most business analysts are involved. Um, there may be in some organizations, but most of the time um, business analysts kind of come in towards the end of planning when they've been assigned to a project. Um, and then they typically start with the analysis phase. That's why you see the, the little hands, right? So what happens in analysis? That's where you're trying to work with your stakeholders to identify the scope of the project. And what does that mean? You're going to be doing lots of interviews. You get when you start a project, you typically start with the scope of a project, right? Management doesn't approve a project without knowing what it is that you're going to deliver. So you are given, as when you're assigned a business uh, to a project as a business business analyst, you're handed like a high-level scope. 
and you're also handed or given um, uh, stakeholders or groups of stakeholders that you'll be interviewing and talking to for that project. So when you come to the analysis phase, you kind of have an idea of what the project is about. But it is your job to kind of drill down and get all the detail level requirements that are needed from all those user groups. There's often times that you'll find that some stakeholders need to be included in the project that were not identified in the planning phase, and that's absolutely okay. You talk to your management, you showcase that these people or teams need to be involved because the project impacts them, and you start to interview them and you start to gather those requirements. So the output of the analysis phase is a business requirements document. Then you go on to design. This is where you'll be working with your Q, uh, the UX resources. These are people that will kind of lay out a prototype and figure out what, you know, how this product, that this project that you're trying to create, how will it look in reality and relation? This is also the time in design uh, where you'll be working with systems analysts to translate your business requirements to your systems requirements, okay? And this is also the time where you'll be working with um, your UX resources, which are the user experience resources, um, and your stakeholders to say, okay, well, this is what um, the design looks like. Do you agree with this with your customers uh, or your stakeholders? And if there's not an agreement, then you go back and you kind of refine that process. So that's happening in design. Implementation is typically when things are being coded, right? So now we have a business requirements document, we have um, the functional requirements, non-functional requirements, we have the technical specifications that the business, the business systems analyst has done. And at this point, we're gonna start coding our project, which is implementation typically. Typically it's called coding, but in this um, diagram, it's called implementation. This is when when the programmers are coding the, the product or the project, this is your time as a business analyst. You should be now writing your test scripts, right? So you take your requirements that you um, got in the analysis phase, right? And you look at your prototypes and you're now starting to write test scripts to make sure that when the developers have coded, you can go in and you can test, right? So your involvement while our developers are coding you're writing those test scripts and getting the users, stakeholders ready for testing. And in the testing phase is when you'll be working with your stakeholders or your customers to make sure that whatever the test scripts or whatever requirements they gave you in analysis are being um, are in the product. So there's um, uh, an exercise that you'll be working on called the traceability matrix, which means um, everything that we wanted in analysis is being is being coded in implementation or coding, and it's being tested, right? Because we don't wanna deliver 100 of the 200 requirements that we gathered in analysis, we wanna deliver all 200, and that's why traceability is pretty important. So then you go into maintenance. So once your customers sign off in the testing phase is when you roll out the project, which means now it goes into production that their customers are using it as well. And then you'll always be in maintenance mode, which is um, further enhancements or things that are needed to add to the project. So this, in a nutshell, talks about how we manage projects in the waterfall methodology. So you start with planning, analysis, design, implementation, testing, and then maintenance. So the major, major, major difference between waterfall and agile is you do all the planning, all the design, all the coding before you see the light of the day, which means before it's rolled out. And in Agile, which we'll be, I'll do, be doing another video, this is the Agile methodology. Okay, I think this is a little bit better. This is the Agile methodology in which you will be, you know, completing smaller chunks called sprints. You know, sprints are typically one to four weeks long. Um, you see a little bit of the product that's being developed or project that's being developed as it is. And in the waterfall, typical projects are like 12 months to 18 months, um, even longer sometimes, depending on the complexity. This is better. Depending on the complexity of a project, right? And in Agile, uh, while the end date may be much longer, you, got, you get to see little bits and pieces of the project. So that's why it's a little bit more adaptive. But both of these are major changes to how we manage projects. Um, so a lot of companies have tried to go from waterfall to agile and have failed because it's a complete shift 
of how um, your your teams are structured, how the work is structured. So it's a complete change. Um, the reason why I'm spending time talking about the waterfall methodology is because lots and lots and lots of companies are still using waterfall. There are some that you'll see hybrid, but majority it's typically waterfall. Some companies typically like, um, you know, new companies that are, um, you know, starting from the fresh ground up, you'll see agile because it's easier to, you know, go into an agile from the very beginning. If you have companies that are doing waterfall, and you transition to agile, there's a big learning curve for everyone that's involved. So I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions on this topic or if there's any other questions that you'd like me to cover on any other topics, and I'd be happy to do so. Again, I hope you found this helpful. If you're watching this in the In Demand Business Analyst page, um, thank you guys for, for liking this page and for being um, uh, on this page. If you're not watching this in the In Demand Business Analyst business page, uh, please like my page so that way you can get access to all the training that I, and content that I put together. Looking forward to seeing you again. Um, bye for now. See ya.